speak to Dr. Catherine Henderson, President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine and an A&E consultant. Thank you very much for joining us. How do you explain the discrepancy between the fact that the government and the medical advisors are saying we've done very well because we haven't let the NHS get overwhelmed and yet when you look at the figures, the number of people who have been infected, the number of people who have sadly died per capita, we are one of the worst affected countries in the world. So the number of deaths is, is awful and every single one of those deaths is, is a death too many. But what we haven't seen is we haven't seen a situation where hospitals have been overwhelmed, where doctors and nurses have had to make decisions that we wouldn't normally make about how we treat people. And that is a good thing. We haven't been in a situation which Italy was in, where emergency departments were, were spilling out into their car parks and into their corridors. And actually, in fact, that hasn't happened to the NHS. So that is good. So... Is our NHS better prepared than any other health service? Because if you look at the numbers, we are fairly equivalent to Italy and maybe Spain. I think our decision making was a little bit ahead because we had seen what had happened in Italy. And there was an absolute determination, in, certainly in the hospital sector, to not reach that position. And we were able to upscale the amount, particularly my ITU colleagues, have done an amazing job at making sure that they had enough um, ITU ventilator. All of that area was really um, expanded incredibly quickly um, so that we could be sure that we would have enough, um, enough uh, of the right sort of clinical care for patients when they came in. How do you think we did in providing frontline staff with PPE? And I don't mean just in ICU, I mean in all aspects of, of people who are, who are confronting this disease. Um, I think there, there have been significant problems with the provision of PPE. I think in hospitals we started off with guidance when there were relatively few numbers of patients so that there was the risk that patients were coming in. I don't think we knew at the beginning about the asymptomatic spread as much as we do now, but I think now we understand that. And to be honest, there's going to be an ongoing issue with PPE because we're going to need to continue to have supplies. We're beginning to talk about this as though this the situation was over. This is a far from over situation. And from now on, when you go into hospital, we're going to need to keep people safe. We're going to need to give, keep patients safe, but we're also going to need to keep staff safe. So there's going to be a really serious ongoing need for protection equipment and social distancing within our hospitals. And that is going to be a huge challenge. Can you imagine going into a crowded emergency department? Can you, go in, can you imagine going into a hospital where everyone is close up against each other, where beds are near each other? We're going to have to really think very, very hard about infection control in a hospital because we need to be able to provide care to very vulnerable patients who need hospital care in the future. And it's not like this is all going to be over in the summer and we can all go back to how we were before. It's not going to be like that. There is, there is a thought, and whether it's unfair or not, that we didn't realise until it was too late the catastrophe that was recurring in care homes rather than in hospitals. How do you feel we, we reacted to, the, to that and are still reacting to it? I, mean, I, think, I think social care has been really difficult. I think because of the fragmentation of social care and I think because um, of not having PPE early enough, we've ended up seeing um, spreads within that community when we've managed to get just general community transmission down and we're hopefully going to keep hospital transmission down. So I think um, the, the provision of PPE to social care was a problem early on and is going to carry on being a problem unless, unless we can get the right kit out to nursing homes, carers who are going from into people's own homes. Um, but we still need to keep the community transmission down because if we don't manage that, then it's all just going to get much, much more difficult. OK, and so do you think it's inevitable that we will have a second and maybe even a third wave? And if so, could it be worse than the first time? Because, I mean, I, I looked at the history of the, the pandemic in 1919 and it, and it morphed into something horrendous. So I'm, I'm this, this isn't my field okay. of expertise, but my area of... of, of, of of concern is to stay 
we mustn't let the public think that this is over now and that we can be relaxed about it. What we can't have is an NHS that's trying to get all those services that people are worried about, cancer services, heart uh, surgery, all the normal things up and running again, which we know people need, but at the same time end up with a second peak and then head into winter and maybe get flu as well. Because if we have all of that going on, the situation could be very much more serious than it is now. Thanks for talking to us, Catherine. Dr Catherine Henderson, President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine and the an A&E uh, consultant herself. So there you are.